Welcome back to Switch to Linux. Well, today I want to just talk very briefly about how to do file backups, and we're just going to do something very simple here. Uh, for you guys that are not necessarily computer gurus, you don't want to get into the terminal, you don't want to do automation things, just very simple uh, point and click type things. And there's two general methods that we can use on Linux, and I want to show you mostly where are your files backed up and even your not just your files but your application settings as you toggle applications that you have installed on your system where are those edits saved so that you can actually not just like in windows go in and restore your personal files but you can also install the applications and restore all of your application settings all at the same time so to do this, we're just going to go on over to my main desktop here. And uh, what we want to do is your files and such are inside of your home folder. So if you are onto your main file structure, uh, which is basically the like the root of the folder, you want to navigate into home, find your individual user file. Of course, this computer, I have uh, four user accounts, one for each of the channels. And we click in on this, and now this is my home folder here. Okay, now inside my home folder, we have just our basic things. So all of my icons here, with, which have pictures, these are kind of your, your basic default ones. Of course, templates is where you have template files for creating new, um, new documents on your create uh, new document tab here. And since this computer pretty much is only used for video production, you can see I have a variety of different Kden Live presets. So if I were to open up any of these, it will load in certain settings, certain clips already pre-populated. Saves a lot of time on video production. So I can save these, drop these back in, and hey, everything's going to be back, not just the files, but actually the settings and applications. Um, this one here is, of course, where my virtual machines are. That's added. Um, I just created this separate one. Now, the other thing you want to know how to do is just kind of view all of your hidden files. So I can actually, inside of uh, Nemo here, just hit Control and H, and this is going to show all files. You can see now we have a lot of individual files. We have a lot of uh, we have a lot of uh, folders here as well. Now, a lot of these folders are going to be containing some important things that you might want to save. Now, you can also go under View, of course, and show hidden files. So that'll also tell you where your hotkey is for anything. Now, the reason you want to come into here is inside of these are where your various applications are. So you can see here's Waterfox settings, all of my profile information for Waterfox. So if I want to take my Waterfox profile and move it to another computer, you can do that. Um, Mozilla, this one is for Firefox. Now, if I had my other computer where I actually do email and things like that, I'd have one for Thunderbird, I'd have one for Evolution. Now, not everything is just in my uh, root folder here. Some things might be under your config, which is where we might have some configuration things. This is, of course, where we see our, um, uh, our individual configurations here, profile data for OBS, which is kind of important for me. And the other spot that we might find something is a dot local folder. So dot local is where of uh, this computer's biggest importance is Kden Live. Inside of Kden Live, any of my effects, anything that I've saved. So like if I come over here, these are my various effects. So social chroma is just a um, uh, a blue screen effect that's used for my uh, my social videos and my uh, subscribe link videos. This one here actually doesn't have a ton of data. If you actually want to see one that I use a lot of, uh, both on the Our Walk in Christ and on the Writing Done Right, we actually have a lot of things over here. So let me go local, share Caden Live in here and show you that we have, uh, maybe I don't have a lot of effects on that one. I thought I did. Uh, that's right, I have I have a lot of things in the template directory. Um, I know I have a lot over here. Let's just go to this one. So this one, dot local, dot share, dot Caden live. Now if I come into effects, we have a lot of effects. These cause my verse ins, verse outs for 15 seconds, for 30 seconds. If I'm promoting a book cover, this tells me is this book cover going to show on the right or on the left. So I have all these effects created and saved in my uh, user folder profile. So 
this makes my producing my videos really quick and really easy. You'll see that I have some for 30 frames per second, some for 15, uh, 60 frames per second. So these effects, I don't want to have to rebuild if I have to redo my computer. So I want to make sure that I'm saving all of the files inside of .local, share, Caden Live effects. So different applications are going to be in different places. Okay, so uh, some things are going to be inside of uh, .local share, some things are going to be inside of .config, and some things are just going to be right here in the uh, in the um, root folder here. So you pretty much want to grab and collect all of the different uh, folders in here if you are doing anything. Let's go back to my basic home folder here. All right, so this basically means that now anything that's not inside of here, by the way, uh, is going to be related directly to the system. Now, Linux Mint and several other Ubuntu-based versions uh, are going to have your application called Time Shift, and it will have a separate application called Backups. Since I'm running on an older version of Linux Mint, I do not think I have... Oh, I do have Time Shift. I did not think I had Time Shift. Uh, what Time Shift is going to do is it's going to make a backup of the system excluding your home folder. So this is equivalent to, on Windows, this is equivalent to your restore point. The other application is called Backup Tool. And uh, the Backup Tool will allow you to make copies of things inside of your home folder, but it doesn't work quite uh, as well as, as it could if you do not understand how the Linux file structure works. In other words, I don't want to back up just my user data. I want to back up my application settings as well. Now, we're not going to focus on looking at our restore points here. I honestly, to be perfectly candid, I see no purpose in time shift. I usually actually uninstall it for my computers. That's why I'm surprised it was on here. The reason for that is if you have a backup of your user data, it is less time for me to spin up the new distro and dump my backup folder, my home folder back on the computer. Way less time to do that than it is to mess with system restore points. So for me, I don't know, different people disagree. Um, look into that and uh, I could actually do videos on doing that one as well. I might in the future, but I wanna focus here on personal data. Now what you'll see is there's two sections here. Your software selection, this just covers the applications that are not installed by default. So if I go ahead and hit back up now, I have the applications here, Chromium, Brasario, HexChat, Sigil, VirtualBox. Now this is not everything because I ha also have on here Audacity, I have Kden Live, obviously. So there are some things that are missing from this list. Not sure exactly why uh, this is the case. And honestly, this for me, it's just easier for me to keep track of the applications that I need. Um, Basically, this is going to produce a file when you come in here, reinstall the operating system, hit restore, pull in that file. It's just going to reinstall those, uh, reinstall those applications. It's possible that OBS, Caden Live, Audacity are not in that list for me because all of those I'm actually using custom PPAs because while I like holding back my system, there are specific versions of those applications I want to be using. That's probably why they're not in that software selection list. Now, inside of our personal data, we have the backup and we have the restore option, of course. Inside of your backup option, first is you want to select where you're going to back it up. So backups, what it's going to do is by default, it's just going to create a backups folder inside of my documents. If you want it to go somewhere else, you can just go ahead and select where you want it to go. Um, now, one of the issues is that it doesn't seem to find things that are not already mounted. So, for example, if I look at Nemo right here, I have a network connection. One of the downsides of this tool, and it's always been a criticism, is it does not actually allow you to back up to a network location by default. Now, I actually have a video about how to do a backup location to a network. What it is going to require is creating an fstab file. So an fstab file, you can mount a directory on boot up that's always going to be there. So when you boot up the system, the internet boots up, it mounts your network file in a specific location. You can select that then from this list.
So that's actually something that you can do if you want to do it um, direct network. Uh, I'm not going to go through that again because I think the first video I had was a pretty good job. I'll go ahead and link to that. But I want to show you at least how to make the file. And when you have the file made, then you're going to go through and just make a copy of that file onto your backup medium. Maybe it's a flash drive, an external uh, hard drive or network share, whatever you can do. So the next thing we're going to do is the first thing it's going to do is it's going to give us exclusions. I am actually excluding the virtual boxes from this. Um, most of my virtual machines are, they're just throwaway machines, but they're also gigabytes and gigabytes of data. And I don't want to be storing gigabytes and gigabytes of data for basically throwaway machines. Now, the few machines that I do have that are important to me, and if I were to boot this guy up, so the the uh, top, it looks like the top three machines here are basically all just throwaway machines. Doesn't matter what happens to those. The Hunix, it's not throwaway, but it's not important to save either because if the system goes down, I'll just go and download the latest Hunix and get it right back. The Windows 10, and this Linux Mint is not um, this one here and the Nopix. These two here I actually use for things that are not just throwaway, but I also have all of the files on these that I need are saved in a separate location. So again, I don't need to save those. Windows 10 machine, I do want to keep this around, but I have a machine copy of this inside of my archives elsewhere. So I back that up on a different location. So I'm going to exclude... Uh, anything inside my document backups, uh, which is um, inside of the, that's kind of my default, which I'm not using that this time, so I'm just going to go ahead and remove that one. Uh, there's nothing there. Then uh, VirtualBox window, uh, VMs, excuse me, um, I'm excluding that one because that will back up just all the virtual machines, and I do not want to do that. So we're going to go ahead and hit forward. Now this is if you want to include. Now if you read this, it says the hidden files and hidden folders located at the root of your home directory are not included by default. I would actually like it if they did do that because it will save up now your files, but it does not save any of your program settings or things like that. And various things like your libraries for Cody or the email settings and the, the email lists and things inside of Evolution or Thunderbird. All of those, I think, are important items. Now, there's some things that are not going to be quite as important. What I'm going to like to do is um, you might come in here and just I'm going to select the cinnamon. Um, Audacity data, I don't really care about that one on this system. I might actually back that up on on uh, Our Walk in Christ where I do audiobooks and uh, podcasts and stuff. But here I'm going to take the dot .config. I want the dot .local for sure. Anything else here I'm going to scan through. Dot .fonts is going to be any custom fonts I've installed. Uh, GIMP, I'll take GIMP because I do actually modify my uh, layout windows a little bit. Um, I'll take the Linux Mint, the icons. I don't really need Mozilla or uh, Waterfox on this particular computer, although I would take that on my other one. I don't even use OpenShot anymore. I should just uninstall that folder. Uh, themes. These are any themes that I have downloaded and are working with. So now those. And then these guys over here are any extra things. Bash history. You know, that's uh, just a history of your bash files. I don't really think that's necessarily important. Uh, anything else that might be useful, I could back up. So we'll go ahead and hit open here. And then what this is going to do is, um, it should give me a list here, unless it only lets me do one at a time. Uh oh, this is files. I'm sorry, I hit, I hit include files. I wanted to hit include directories. My, my apologies. Hit directories. <laughs> All right, so there's Cinnamon, Config, I wanted to do Fonts, I wanted to do GIMP, Icons, Linux Mint, Local. I think that's all I needed. So that gets me my, my directories, one for directories, one for files. This is for individual files. So now it's going to take a backup of all of my basic home folders. So the templates is going to go here, the documents, desktop, pictures, music, videos, all that's going to take a backup. But now it's also going to back these guys up as well. Go ahead and hit reply, uh, apply, and now it's going to do a backup. Um, 
I'm going to want to probably, uh, I'm not going to hang out on the video while it makes a backup of this because this is gigabytes and gigabytes of data because I had the video archive in there. I should have excluded that if I want to show you the uh, principle of how this works. So that's kind of how you can do this with the tool and the applications. I'm just going to go ahead and cancel that guy. Uh, you can see here it's creating um, uh, just a, a big tar. Let's just go ahead and get rid of that guy. Now, what I personally like to do yeah, I'm a manual guy. I always have been. So I just open this guy up right here, have this guy so I can hide things, and I will just literally come in here, grab the desktop, grab documents. Um, I don't generally need the downloads folder. Uh, I want pictures. I want templates. I don't want videos. That's actually just a backup of videos on the computer, but those get dumped every um, every couple weeks into a backup, uh, into an external backup. And then let's say cinnamon, config, GIMP, fonts, icons, Linux, Mint, local. I think that's all I really need. Now what I would do is there's two options I can do. I can just plug in an external USB drive and just whoop, whoop, copy them over to that external USB drive. I can do all that. Or the second thing that I could actually do is with those guys copied, I can just open up my archive manager, create my own manual backup over here. Let's just call it a backup. And let's put it on the desktop. Hit create. Copy these guys on over into here. And this is just going to go ahead and make a backup archive. And then I can take this archive. I could password protect the, the archive here. But taking your archive, uh, putting that on a network share, you can do things like that. So this is literally how I back my systems up. I do it all manually. I have actually had problems before with running automation where I'd go in here, do some automated script. Everything says, hey, looks all looks all good. But the reality is I turn around and find that, oh, really, it did not actually make the backup. And I didn't realize it until, you know, I was actually going through and restoring a backup and realized half my stuff's not there. All right. So that's kind of how I do backups. I like this method here. Now, if you are comfortable with the terminal, you can actually create an archive from a list of files and folders. And you can create what is called a cron job. And uh, inside of that, you can tell that to send it directly to a network share at some given point in time. If you'd be interested in a video like that, I would be glad to work on one. It'll take a little bit of extra time to do. Um, but anyway, I could go ahead and uh, create something like that so you guys can see how to do an, an automated system. Um, but on Linux, it's very cool to do that because you can just set a cron job. And then, you know, every, you know, however period of time that is, it just runs a script grabs a copy of everything, creates a tarball, and ships it off to your system, and then deletes the thing from your computer. So you have a network backup of uh, some form or another without actually having to keep any files in your system long term. So those are all of your various options. The biggest takeaway from this video here is to understand how the Linux user directory structure works. So inside of home slash your username, again, in this computer's case, there's going to be one folder for each individual user. So I actually have four user accounts on this video production computer. This is the one that I have. And your application settings can also be backed up in addition to anything else. So we're going to go ahead and cancel that. But uh, this is just a very nice uh, tutorial here on doing quick data backups, especially if you are new to Linux and you want to know where and how to back things up, how to back up your files and your, your uh, application settings. That's the important way to go. So thanks for coming along on uh, this video, and I hope that you have uh, learned something new. And don't forget, you can have a look at the links in the description down below if you want to help support the channel or learn more about what we're doing. So we will catch you later, and I hope that you enjoy switching to Linux.